So the first topic in pediatric endodontics we have is pulp capping. So pulp capping as the name itself suggests that it is simply a procedure of capping the pulp tissue. So procedure of capping the pulp tissue. Now why do you want to cap the pulp tissue? Because we want to preserve the vitality of the tooth. And as we all know that pulp is the source of the vitality for the tooth. So we want to preserve the vitality so that the tooth can remain into the oral cavity for a longer duration of time. So that is the basic rationale of doing the pulp capping procedure. Now, uh, in what situations can we do the pulp capping procedure? Of course, it is not indicated in every situation. So there are specifically two conditions where pulp capping can be performed. So these two conditions could be the first one, whenever there is a pinpoint exposure of the tooth in the clean and sterile area. So the first indication is pinpoint exposure of the pulp in a clean sterile area. The second indication we have is when the caries are nearby to the pulp but pulp is still not exposed. Okay, so the two uh, conditions where there is either a pinpoint exposure or another condition is when the caries are very nearby approaching the pulp tissue. So now um, based on these two conditions, we have uh, some terms that are associated with pulp capping. The first condition whenever there is a pinpoint exposure of the pulp in the sterile area, we call this as direct pulp capping. Okay, so the first one is called as direct pulp capping okay and the second one when the caries are very nearby to the pulp but the pulp is still not exposed we call this procedure as indirect pulp capping now why uh, they are called so and what all things we do uh, in this that we can discuss in the coming slides so the first one that is the direct pulp capping. Direct pulp capping can be defined as a procedure in which the exposed vital pulp is covered with a protective dressing or base placed directly over the site of exposure in an attempt to preserve the vitality of the pulp. So as I said that if there is a very pinpoint exposure, you are going to cover that small exposure with a protective dressing and with by covering it with that dressing you are going to uh, you are going to maintain the vitality of the pulp so this is uh, this is the direct pulp capping procedure now what are the indications of direct pulp capping so the first indication is asymptomatic conditions second is small exposures less than 0.5 millimeter in diameters third indication Hemorrhage from the exposure site is easily controlled, that is within 10 minutes. Fourth indication, the exposure occurred is clean and uncontaminated whenever there is a rubber dam isolation. So this is a very um, uh, strict protocol because if the site is contaminated, then in that condition, um, your direct pulp capping procedure is not going to be successful. So keeping uh, the things sterile is uh, a big criteria in this. Another indication, atraumatic exposure and little desiccation of tooth with no evidence of aspiration of blood into the dentin. Now the contraindications of direct pulp capping. Whenever there is large carious exposure in symptomatic permanent tooth, in that condition, uh, direct pulp capping cannot be done. So the next topic we have here is indirect pulp capping. So indirect pulp capping is defined as a procedure wherein the deepest layer of the remaining affected caries dentin 
is covered with a layer of biocompatible material in order to prevent pulp exposure and further trauma to the pulp. So um, here there is a word that is affected carious dentin. Affected carious dentin. So what is this? So we have basically two types of carious dentin. One is called as infected dentin. And the other is called as affected dentin. So infected dentin is basically a superficial layer of the dentin, superficial layer of the carious dentin. It is soft and easily removed. Whereas the affected dentin is a deeper layer and not easily removed. The infected dentin, as the name itself suggests that it is infected, that means it has lots of bacteria in that. So infected dentin teams with bacteria. Affected dentin whereas does not have bacterial contamination. Now infected dentin because it, it has so much bacterial contamination, it cannot be remineralized. Whereas affected dentin it can be remineralized. Infected dentin has irreversibly damaged collagen. Whereas affected dentin has reversibly damaged collagen. Okay, so basically in indirect pulp capping, we are trying to preserve the affected dentin and later on this dentin is going to be mineralized and that's how we would preserve the vitality of your um, pulp tissue. So what is the basic objective of indirect pulp capping? To preserve the vitality of the pulp by completely removing the carious infected dentin followed by placement of a material that would enable the affected dentin to remineralize by stimulating the underlying odontoblast to form tertiary dentin. So as I said that um, affected dentin we have to leave and you have to uh, place a dressing on top of the affected dentin and this dressing is going to stimulate the underlying odontoblast cells and that will ultimately form the tertiary dentin and that's how another layer of dentin would be formed and uh, uh, the vitality of the uh, pulp would be preserved. So you have to remember that this stimulation of the underlying odontoblast by uh, the placement of the material on top of affected dentin. So that is the basic mechanism of indirect pulp capping. Now, what are the indications of indirect pulp capping? So permanent teeth diagnosed with normal pulp with no signs or symptoms of pulpitis. So as I said that the caries is very close to the pulp. It has not reached to the pulp. However, it looks in the radiograph that it is about to reach the pulp. Contraindications, large pulpal exposures in non-restorable tooth or tooth with poor prognosis. Now, um, in this picture, you can see that in direct pulp capping here, direct pulp capping, this small area of the pulp was exposed, okay. So, we uh, have put a medicament that is usually the calcium hydroxide on top of this pinpoint exposure followed by placement of a lining material which is usually glass ionomer cement followed by placement of the composite filling that is here. 
So you have three layers. First layer is of the calcium hydroxide. So the first layer is of the calcium hydroxide, the second layer of your glass isomer cement and the third layer of the composite. Now, uh, what is the rationale of putting the glass isomer lining um, in between the calcium hydroxide and the composite? So usually what happens is the composite material, it has uh, the property of micro leakage, it shrinks with time. So um, if the lining material like glass isomer is not placed, the calcium hydroxide uh, is going to undergo hydrolysis and um, this is ultimately going to affect the formation of dentin. So we don't want all these things to happen and we want a better sealing ability. So that's the reason that uh, we are placing a glass isomer lining um, uh, beneath the composite material. So that is your direct pulp capping. In the indirect pulp capping, you can see here that your dentin sorry, your um, caries is approaching the pulp tissue and uh, your affected dentin is still there. On top of affected dentin, you have placed a medicament of calcium hydroxide and above calcium hydroxide, the glass isomer lining followed by composite filling. Now, um, as we have seen that calcium hydroxide is the most common pulp capping material. But other than calcium hydroxides, there are many other materials used for pulp capping. So the first one in this category we have is MTA. So MTA is a very, um, it's a great material. And um, nowadays it's pretty common uh, to use MTA for pulp capping procedure. Uh, other materials we have are tricalcium phosphate, bioaggregate, biodentin, bonding systems. Nowadays, lasers are also used for pulp capping purpose. The other materials used in pulp capping are propolis, isobutyl cyanoacrylate, resin bonding agents, antibiotics, corticosteroids, collagen, chondroitin sulfate, alkaline phosphatase, polycarboxylate cements. So these are uh, different types of materials that people tried over a period of time and saw that if they could stimulate the formation of tertiary dentin because that is what the ultimate aim is. So to preserve the vitality of the pulp, how to preserve it by formation of tertiary dentin. How tertiary dentin would be formed? You need some kind of stimulation from some agent externally so that the odontoblasts are stimulated and the dentin could be formed.